What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of the five takeaways as we beat Leicester 3 1 at the lane yesterday. Um, so, five takeaways is when we take a look at the game and see what we can take away uh, from the game. We've got five takeaways to go through, and the first one is Sonny's left. Yeah, is there a more ambidextrous player in the Premier League right now than Hume Min Son? Um, 11, he's now scored 11 goals with his left foot um, as of yesterday, which is second only to Mo Salah in the league. Um, level with uh, Riyad Mahrez and uh, one more than Bakayo Saka, who's a left-footed player. Um, obviously, he's got 19 now in the league, three behind Salah in total. But the fact that he's a right-footed player, 11 of his 19 goals have been with his left foot, shows uh, that does he, does he have a weaker foot? <laughs> Probably I not. I don't think so. I don't think so. And Conte seemed uh, surprised about, well, not even surprised. He was like, uh, Sonny keeps telling me his uh, favourite foot is his right foot. And then he does that with his left. I mean, and to score more goals with your left than your right. I mean, I, I think he's equally as strong on both feet. I really believe that. Mm. I mean, the guy's... A phenomenon. I mean, it shows by the by uh, how many goals he scores scores with his left. And it's the first he's the first right-footed player to get over ten goals with his left foot since Kane back in seventeen eighteen. So very very impressive and shows um, that it doesn't matter what side he goes on. He still is clinical. Obviously, he got two goals and an assist overall yesterday, and he was um, star of the show yet again. Does that mean that there's a potential maybe to stick him on the right and Bergwijn can can go more on the left? You could argue that. I just feel like with Sonny. For sometimes I I I I've criticized him before. He does as much as obviously he scored a lot of goals with his left. Sometimes when he's on the run, he doesn't trust his left enough. I feel like he could go either way and sometimes he still goes with his right a bit too much. So um maybe that's why he hasn't gone um played on the right as much as uh, he could. But I think it's a possibility. Why I mean, obviously Kulu's there now, so there's no need for it, but um, yeah, I'm saying in, in games like yesterday, you know, when he yeah, didn't play. Why not try um so on the left on the right, cutting on, on his left? Because he's shown he can do it. Mm, agreed. Uh let's move on to the second takeaway, and that is Decky Impact. Big up Dejan. Yeah, so Lucas obviously had a chance yesterday to reclaim a spot in the first team um from the start of the game. Uh he was a surprise inclusion and uh, a lot of people were complaining um, before kickoff about his inclusion and rightly so because he had a bit of a shocker and Spurs were, were struggling to really kill the game off before um, he was subbed off for 55 minutes and then Decky came on and he really did change the game. He got two assists, created two chances, completed three of his four take-ons, 100% passing, didn't misplace any passes when he came on and he's now got eight assists for the season, um, does Decky, and that's 11 goal contributions in 14 games. Um, really impressive stuff from him, more assists than any Arsenal um, player in, the, in their squad. And he really made a massive impact when he came on and he helped seal the win uh, with his two, ass two assists for Son and showed what we were missing when he was on, on the bench. Yeah, exactly. And it was a game where we were struggling to create chances in the first half. Uh, the chances were very, very limited. Obviously, we scored from the corner, but we didn't create too many openings. And then as soon as Kulu came on, um, you saw the chance creations just rapidly increased. I mean, he grabbed that game by the scruff of the neck. He was taking on players. Um, he was at his creative best. And um, when you're comparing it to those last few performances, I mean, yeah, it was probably well, maybe not right to take him out of the team, but um, I could understand the decision to take him out of the team because his last two performances were pretty much anonymous, but he came back better than ever um, this week. And um, gearing up to the big games against uh, Liverpool and uh, Arsenal this weekend uh, mm. and, and next midweek. So um, hopefully he can carry on in that ilk in those games. Definitely. So let's move on to the third takeaway, and that is a ruthless Romero. Yeah, and he another brilliant display from him, um, not giving the Leicester attack an inch when 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 he's coming towards the ball. He made three tackles, three interceptions, five clearances, won seven of his ten duels, and completed two out two dribbles as well throughout the game, which is nothing more Romero than that. And obviously his game, his performance was summed up by his uh, brilliant double tackle in the lead up to the second goal, which really forced the issue. Created, created space for Decky to move into and um, we obviously punished Leicester and um, that that piece of play was very ruthless from Romero and taking no prisoners with that second tackle. Absolutely. Um, it was great to see. I mean, the, the stands actually got to their feet um, with those two challenges and was just like, come on, Cootie. Uh, but he was not, not just in that moment, but he was absolutely... A, 
of that ilk pretty much the whole game. He didn't have any Leicester attacker um, getting any sort of spare change off him. And the guy is growing, growing and growing into a top, top centre-back. When he came uh, to Spurs, every we all knew um, that you know, he got a Serie A Defender of the Year last year and stuff like that. Uh, but we thought, you know, maybe first year in the Premier League, he would need quite a bit of time to adjust to the pace of the game and adjust to a new league. But he's just fitted in like a glove. He's our best defender by, by a landslide and uh, I'm just loving what I'm seeing from him and um, we need to bring in players of, of this kind of ilk if we're going to keep Conte and um, kind of progress where we need to progress to mm, Agreed. Um, now let's move over to the fourth takeaway and that is aggressive midfield Yes, yeah, so Hoybe and Bentancourt um, were definitely very aggressive yesterday and they patrolled the middle of the park up against uh, what could have been a difficult um, um, opposition in uh, Mendy and Sumare throughout the game. But um, they controlled everything and we actually dominated the midfield and that shows in the stat that Spurs won 18 tackles in the midfield third yesterday, which is more than any other game we've had this season in, in, mid, in terms of tackles in the area. Obviously, Romero stepping into midfield um, definitely contributed to that as well as um, um, Emerson and Cessio on wing backs as well being quite combative but it was definitely more mostly down to Hoybier and Bentancourt making sure that when there were tackles to be won midf in midfield they were there and covering um, covering all the ground and putting out as many fires as possible and I thought they both played a very solid game. Yeah I mean especially Bentancourt who I was really impressed with yesterday on the back of a couple of uh, not great displays. I mean, maybe it was because he was carrying a knock, but it seemed like uh, that was well put behind him in this game. I think he was brilliant. Like you say, very aggressive, kept the ball ticking as well. Um, so I think that we need we need these um, midfielders to carry on being as aggressive as they were on the weekend if we've got any chance of top four this season. And we're going to need Romero to keep stepping up into that midfield like he has been um, if we're going to need any chance to, you know, gain control of that midfield because in the last couple of games we've had no control in the midfield whatsoever this game we had complete control in the midfield and we won the game uh, quite comfortably in mm -hmm. the end so um, I think that's the kind of blueprint that we need to follow now uh, from now until the end of the season if we're going to kind of trying to achieve our goals so that kind of moves us on to the last and final takeaway and that is playing catch up Yes, yeah, so Arsenal obviously winning straight after Spurs, um, even though Spurs got a good result against Leicester. It was dampened slightly with Arsenal getting three points um, straight away. And it does mean that um, Spurs now uh, still lag two points behind Arsenal on the table. It looks like United are out of it. West Ham definitely out of it now after them losing to um, Arsenal. Uh, Chelsea potentially dragged back into the top four conversation with their defeat, but unlikely that they're going to drop enough points from now to the end of the season. So it is pretty much a straight shootout between Spurs and Arsenal. And Spurs now, we, if uh, they need a win at Anfield to guarantee being within three points of Arsenal um, in going into that North London derby, which is all important, considering <coughs> if we win, we need to be in a position to win to overtake them uh, with the games coming up. But we are playing catch-up at the moment and we need to make sure that even if we do lose at Anfield, we, we can go into that North London derby with a win to stay in touching distance and maybe we, we'll get a second um, bite of the cherry later in the season. But it's all to play for in these last few games. You mean the next week <laughs> later in the yeah. season? Yeah, there is only four games left. But no, I think that obviously the most ideal scenario is that we can play Arsenal to go above them. Um, but... I think there will be opportunities. The game after is a massive game in terms of the top four race, in my opinion. If we can stay in touching distance with that, they go to Newcastle away and we got Burnley at home. So um, I think that is a key moment. Uh, but yeah, like you say, I think if we can get a result at Liverpool this weekend, um, that will put us in a very good chance to get this top four. I really believe that. And I think um, it's all to play for. It really is all to play for. Uh, it might not seem like it at the moment with us going to Anfield this weekend and Arsenal got Leeds at home but even if we lose that game and, and Leeds win I mean and Arsenal win that, that, that weekend we can beat them in the North London derby and still have an opportunity against Newcastle to overtake them mm, that's what we got to hope for so that is that that is our five takeaways um, for the 3-1 win against Leicester let me know your opinions on our five takeaways and also if we have missed anything out put your takeaways in the comment section below like subscribe and comment and as always come on you Spurs, Spurs.